This video is sponsored by PCBV. Welcome everyone. In this video I'm going to talk about the mechanism I built for my focus stacking rig. I showed my system in my previous videos, so please uh, check those if you are interested. And uh, I showed in one of the videos how I assembled the PCB which I uh, made. That is this guy here. So this is the driver PCB for the mechanism in the background. But now I'm uh, going to show you how this uh, mechanism is built. So here you can see that I have an assembled uh, system already and I showed you already in uh, my previous video that it works and it does the job uh, pretty well. But then uh, here you can see everything in uh, pieces. So uh, when I bought the components for this uh, system, I bought two of everything or whatever the amount uh, was needed. So those are here. And then uh, I also printed uh, the new parts identical to these parts and identical to those parts which I already shared on my website and on my uh, PCBWay project website. So then we can see how it is assembled. So first uh, we can look at the wall system which is already assembled uh, just to see uh, what are the components. So here on the right hand side you can see that there is a NEMA 17 stepper motor uh, which is held by a bracket here uh, designed specifically for this uh, motor. And then there is a coupler which is uh, connected to this uh, lead screw here with uh, 8 mm diameter and 1 mm pitch. And then uh, Parallel with this lead screw, we have two uh, rails here, 8 mm uh, rails, and this provides the support for this uh, crosshead, which you can see holds the clamping mechanism or clamp uh, for the camera. So this is a regular uh, mounting uh, yeah, device or mechanism. And then uh, you can see also that uh, these rails, the linear rails, are supported on both sides uh, using these uh, 3D printed uh, pieces. And then uh, the lead screw itself is supported by some uh, bearing. So you can see on both sides I have uh, bearings. And then here in the middle we have an anti-backlash nut. Uh, you can see the brass uh, color there. So that is the nut which connects this uh, lead screw here uh, with the crosshead. And then also you see these two uh, parts which are just some uh, linear sliding bearings. I will talk about them when I show you the parts uh, piece by piece. So basically this is the system that we are going to build in today's video. So since we have a lot of uh, 3D printed parts and also a PCB, it is a good time to talk about today's video's sponsor PCBWay. So if you visit my project page on PCBWay's website, you can find this PCB there and using their services, you can manufacture this PCB and get the same circuit as I'm holding here uh, in my hand. So they can produce this uh, PCB for you and then you can build your own focus stacking circuit. And also if you want to build this mechanism which is uh, shown on the display, you can go to my other project website on PCBWay's webpage and using their 3D printing services, you can select uh, these parts. I uploaded everything there and you can use their 3D printing services to uh, get these nice uh, parts uh, manufactured by them. So please visit PCBWay's website and my project page is on PCBWay's webpage and then you can get both the PCBs and the 3D printed parts manufactured by them. So now let me talk about these mechanical parts uh, a little bit and uh, I want to go in the same order as we have this uh, mechanism built. So we go from right uh, to left and then we can start with the stepper motor here and then uh, I can build up everything step by step. So this is a NEMA 17 stepper motor as you can see, uh, nothing extraordinary. I have already put in the four uh, M3 uh, screws there or bolts. Uh, you can see so a regular uh, NEMA uh, 17 motor, nothing else. And then uh, you can pick your coupling. So this part here uh, which connects uh, the shaft this guy here of the stepper motor with the, with the lead screw. So now this is a flexible coupler. So this is the eight millimeter side. And this is the, if I don't remember wrong, uh, the five millimeter side. 
So then stepper motor side and lead screw side. And you can even pick this guy here. It's the same uh, diameters. And uh, the only difference between them is that this is flexible and this is rigid. So it's up to you how you, how you want to uh, use it. And then we can talk about the lead screw. So once this thing focuses on it, you can see. So this is eight millimeter diameter. The length of this is 20 uh, centimeters. And uh, then the thread pitch is one millimeter. So if you turn this one full uh, turn around, then the nut along this uh, shaft will travel one millimeter. So when you convert the rotation into linear displacement, then that will mean that if you do 360 degrees turn, then the nut, or in the final case, the crosshead, uh, will travel one millimeter in, in the corresponding direction. And since we started to talk about the lead screws, or the lead screw, then this is the counterpart of it. So this is the uh, anti-backlash uh, nut. So how it works is that you have this uh, spring, and you can see that there is a notch and groove there, which uh, meet very nicely. So you compress this uh, together and then you insert the screw and then screw everything together while this uh, spring is compressed. So when you release this after threading everything through uh, the two pieces of the nuts, then this spring tries to press everything uh, apart from each other. So that means that uh, the threads in this nut and in this nut will be always engaged uh, with the threads uh, here or the let's call them teeth. So in that case uh, there won't be too much problem with the uh, backlash because you always have a physical contact between the nut or nuts or half nuts and uh, the thread here. So that's that. And then uh, this uh, anti-backlash nut uh, sits in the center of this crosshead, so you can see that uh, we have some small diameter change in there because this is the back side and uh, then uh, this is the front side. So you can see that I can enter here and insert uh, the nut with the spring and then uh, I will screw this there and on the back side I have the spring sticking out. So I will have to make sure that uh, uh, this part here meets this part here, so they will uh, meet like this. Uh, that's a tricky part, so that will be a bit difficult, but uh, it's doable. So once everything is compressed nicely, you can see that uh, I can press this in. And then I just have to uh, screw in the, the, the screw. And since I'm already holding this in my hand, I can talk about these two holes. So they will hold these uh, dry line, uh, linear bearings or sliding bearings. Here you can see the brand and here you can see uh, the type of it. So I created these holes that uh, there is a snug fit between these uh, two components. So it slides in there and here also slides in there nicely. And it's in level as you can see, so nothing is sticking out, so the length is uh, designed accordingly and then I just choose uh, one of these uh, linear rails and it nicely slides through so there is nothing uh, hindering the motion so that's that and then uh, you can see that there are four holes on each side so I have these small insert nuts so they will be heated up uh, with the tip of uh, a soldering iron, like this. And then I will just use uh, two per side. I will show this from a better perspective when I actually do it. Uh, they will be pressed in here. So then I can use the cap, which goes on this back side and then uh, screw on the cap uh, over these insert uh, nuts. So then uh, the crosshead will be covered uh, perfectly. And then also an advantage of this cap is that this covers 
the revealed side of this uh, linear bearing or sliding bearing. So if the bearing would get stuck and if we would move in a certain way that this could be pulled out, it won't be pulled out because this holds it there. But uh, when I assemble it, you will see it, how it works. So then uh, jumping a little bit back uh, to the motor, uh, the motor is supported by this bracket. So then the bracket sits at the end of this uh, 2080 uh, profile, extrusion profile. And this extrusion profile is 25 centimeters long, so 5 centimeters longer than uh, these components. So the two rails on the two sides and uh, the linear uh, lead screw in the center. So that extra 5 centimeter is enough for mounting the motor, as you can see, and having the coupling in between the uh, lead screw and the uh, shaft of the stepper motor. So yeah, this is also a 3D printed component. So this is the motor side, uh, this is the coupler side where we have this sticking out part, but actually you could flip it if it's needed, but uh, I use it in, in this direction. And then the motor comes uh, to this uh, side. And then I'm just using these uh, T uh, nuts, as you can see. So they go in these holes. In this uh, construction, I'm just using the two holes at the side, but I made four if you need, I don't know, extra rigidity. So that goes through and then you fix it against uh, this and uh, this screw here. So that's uh, simple. And then uh, maybe we should talk about these parts because they are very important. So these are the so-called supports. So they support everything basically, you can see. So they actually designed in a way that they clip on this. So it's a very snug fit, but uh, they, they perfectly uh, fit on this. So how they work is the following. You can see that there are two holes here. So from the top, you can insert a bit uh, tinier uh, bolts. So these are M3 and uh, they are 10 uh, millimeter long. And then also from the side, you have a bit uh, larger bolts uh, entering. So they are uh, M5, so five millimeter uh, diameter. So that means that this uh, piece is supported from the top. So from these holes and also uh, from the side. Uh, you can see here and there. So then uh, we have two holes on the sides, you can see, and uh, they match with the uh, linear rails here. So those are eight millimeter. And uh, when you print them, uh, they might have a bit uh, tighter uh, tolerance there. I uh, oversized it, so on paper or in Fusion 360, this is 8.05 millimeters. So it should be a very snug fit uh, when you fit uh, the linear rail in it. But it's not always the reality because every printer has some certain tolerance. So this might not be the same on every printers. And uh, there is a solution for that. You take an eight millimeter drill bit and you ream the hole. So you have to make sure that the drill bit goes in and uh, it can rotate uh, properly. So then you can, uh, let's say, adjust the inner diameter of this thing to, to fit this guy here. So you make sure that this goes in and then it's uh, supported. And uh, all you need is just uh, you press in the, the, the linear rail and then you press on the other side once everything is assembled and uh, that, that holds everything together. So nothing else is needed there. And then uh, here you see three more holes that we haven't discussed. So the center hole is eight millimeter and that's uh, slightly larger than eight millimeter in fact. And uh, it's very obvious that that should uh, be parallel with the lead screw because that's where the lead screw goes. But it doesn't go through all the way on uh, both sides. It only goes through here because that's where it should need meet uh, the coupler. So what uh, the other two holes do is that they hold the bolts uh, for these bearings. So you can see that uh, the bearings holes are matching these. So 
they go there. And there is two solution. Uh, there are two solutions here. So one solution is now what I'm using in the second build, which I'm building right now when I'm recording the video. So I just use a very long uh, bolt, which goes all the way through uh, the housing of the bearing. So this part here and this plastic part, and then it sticks out at the back side. So I just fix it with a nut. So that will be in today's video. But uh, previously what I did, again, I used somewhat larger insert uh, nuts and then I just uh, press them in. So they are just, uh, as you can see, there is, there is no nut on the other side because uh, inside uh, the plastic, on each side, there is a insert nut uh, sitting. And then I just used uh, these flat uh, bolts here and there to screw them into these uh, insert nuts. But uh, today I'm, I'm going to show you the, the other approach when I'm just using a long enough uh, bolt and then I just uh, directly bolt it together. So basically this is all parts. So let me rearrange these things and then I uh, show you piece by piece uh, what I built here. So I leave this part on the side as a reference, uh, but then uh, we can start with this profile. So as I mentioned, uh, this one is a 25 centimeter long uh, profile, and this is a uh, 2080 profile. So 20 millimeter height and 80 millimeters uh, wide. So it is basically four 2020 next to each other. Yeah, you can see the four holes. So you, you, you can buy this easily from AliExpress. Uh, I put a link on my website so you can find this uh, very easily or on any other websites. So it's a typical uh, size uh, to use. And I think the first thing that we should do is we should put on the bracket for the stepper motor. So I will uh, start with that. In the same way as I did here, uh, I will just use the holes on the two sides. So I just uh, press in uh, the bolts and then I start to screw on these uh, T-nuts and then I just make them parallel with the grooves here and uh, try to put it on. So this is on and I let it slide because I will need to uh, yeah, align it uh, properly when all the other parts are installed on this uh, uh, mounting surface. And then we can install the stepper motor. So I just remove the bolts, which I have already screwed in, and then I install it here. And before installing the motor, make sure that this is pointing in a direction where it is convenient to uh, mount the cable. In this uh, example, it is pointing upwards because then I can yeah, bring the cable anywhere. But maybe you will put your PCB or the circuitry somewhere else where you would want to have it sideways or, or something. But uh, just pay attention how you install it. So this is done, as you can see. So it's sitting there solid, uh, in a solid way. And then uh, now I can move this uh, gently back and forth and the motor stays there. So now let's move to these parts and let me install the bearings, uh, which will hold the uh, lead screw. So for that, I just need these longer uh, bolts and then install them. So let, let's do that. So remember that uh, this has uh, a hole to hold the linear rails and the other side is solid. So they should face inside and that also means that uh, the bearing should be on that side. I guess it's obvious but uh, still I want to mention it. So it's there. And when you build it, leave it uh, loose a little bit because uh, this can be tightened once everything is uh, put together. So then you can align everything to be uh, parallel. So one is done. And then again, uh, the whole part should uh, be the same side where we install the bearing. So these are also done. So then uh, we can start installing the lead screw and uh, the other uh, screws soon. So before putting together everything, now we arrive to the cross head. So again, uh, we have the back side of the cross head uh, where we can insert uh, these things. So they just go in. 
just like that and no reaming is needed here. And then uh, we have the more fun part, let's say. So we can uh, install the anti-backlash uh, nut. So as I said, the spring is on this. And then you have to make sure that this groove is aligned with this uh, ear or these ears on both sides. So that, that's a bit tricky part, but uh, yeah, it's manageable. So now you can see that I managed to put everything together. And now since uh, the printed part is made in a way, I cannot pull this out or push this out in, in any sides. So I just uh, need to find the, the bolts. So I will use the bolts in the same way as I used it here uh, to directly screw the bolts into the 3D printed uh, plastic part. So I will just use two M4 uh, parts, roughly one centimeter long the threaded side and then uh, they will just uh, they will be bought it there so now you see that uh, those holes overlap now as I rotate you can see the change so then I just uh, directly screw these bolts into the plastic so they cut their threads to themselves so now you can see that we have the two screws there diagonally and now this is uh, stable as heck so that's that's done so now what we need to do is that we have to put this cap on. So that comes on like this. So for that we need to have the insert nuts on these sides. They are sitting here. So let me prepare the camera to show this from a better perspective. And uh, then I just uh, show you how to do it. So here you can see the nut. I'm holding it from the sideways. And then I just put it over the hole here. And uh, press it in. Uh, using a soldering iron. So the soldering iron is hot and now you can see that we are going in. There it is. So now I just have to repeat this three times. So then first I insert it here. And that's all. You can see it's in level on both sides so I can put on the cap. So let me rearrange the camera again and I show you how the cap is going on the back side of this crosshead. So now we have the crosshead and we have the cap so they go together nicely and I have this small uh, drill bit in my hand because I want to uh, tell you that you should make sure that you go through these holes with, an, with a 3 mm diameter or 3.5 mm diameter drill bit just to ream these holes a little bit uh, for, for the screws or bolts that uh, we are going to use you can see it there uh, to fix the plate against uh, the crosshead using these insert nuts so this is just uh, to help you a little bit so then, uh, yeah, you just align it as it should be aligned and then you start with the bolts. And make sure that you don't uh, uh, turn them all the way uh, inside, just like, I don't know, 80%. So you leave a little bigger room for the wall plate, so then you can align everything. So now you can see everything is nicely assembled. So we have the cross head with the cap, so we can insert these guys.
So now everything is uh, put together, crosshead, rails and lead screw. And the two things that we have to pay attention to, uh, these four holes should face upwards because they will uh, hold this small plastic uh, thing which holds uh, this uh, mounting thingy for the camera. Uh, so holes uh, face upwards, so it stays there. And another thing is that this nut should face towards the stepper motor. So it should sit like exactly like this. So the first thing I do is I retract uh, these rails and then uh, this support should sit like this at the end, right? So then I just press uh, this through a little bit and then I insert the rails to their corresponding holes. So you see there. And you can feel when the resistance is enough that uh, you pressed it all the way in. And then uh, comes this part. So again, you see the hole and uh, the rail and also on this side. So then I just press them together until they really go together. Uh, you can gently place it like this and then press on the top just to make sure that uh, they sit uh, parallel. Or alternatively, you put this down and then you can use a hammer to uh, just knock on them. I will try that uh, just to make sure that uh, the lengths are correct. So that's that. And uh, now we can actually place this on top of this. And the only thing that you have to pay attention to is that this side meets at the end of the profile perfectly. So it's done. You can see that uh, that is parallel. And of course it will be pulled to the uh, profile perfectly, this part. So there will be no gaps uh, anywhere, but we need uh, those uh, screws on, on both sides. But now you can see that uh, here we miss the coupler. So of course uh, this will be removed like this. And then uh, once uh, these are aligned perfectly, so I can rotate this uh, well, uh, we, can, we can fix the screws or the bolts. And then uh, we can put on the coupler on, the, on this side. And... Uh, then just fix it together with this. So let me align uh, these screws off camera because it uh, doesn't matter if I show it or not. I just uh, tighten these uh, screws now. So once these uh, bolts and uh, nuts are tight enough on both sides, uh, we can install the screws here. So then uh, I prepared four plus four, four from the side and four from the top. So then you just take one Again, these holes are good if you ream them a little bit, but then yeah, you can see that now I'm basically cutting the thread uh, with this bolt. Now you see that the bolt is coming out on the other side. So I just place this in and then uh, loosen it a little bit so I can press this in. And then I just uh, put this under the bolt and then screw it in. So you see, it caught uh, the nut. So, three more to go. So this side is done, you can see it. Then comes the motor side. So it's done, and it's solid enough, so it will not fall off, and it holds everything together well. Uh, after fixing the supports on the two sides, you might need to uh, loosen these uh, bearings and then realign them again so you can easily uh, move the bolt and uh, the crosshead. So then, yeah, just loosen everything and then realign and then tighten everything until you are satisfied with the uh, torque required to uh, move the crosshead. So I can feel that there is a resistance now, so I will probably uh, play around with the uh, bearings for a while. And then uh, also at the end don't forget to apply a little bit of oil here 
some lubricant uh, because you want to get as low as possible friction here. So just take some oil. Then just put a few drops there and uh, rotate this thing so the oil will work itself into the threads. So rotate it in two directions and then you can spread the oil and then use some uh, swab or something to remove the excess oil which is on the surface of this uh, breast nut. And obviously you can repeat it from this side as well but uh, if you put the oil here and travel back and forth long enough then you can spread the oil uh, good enough. So now we have the screws on the side and as I said uh, we have holes here on the top uh, which we can use also if, if it's needed to add additional support for the for the support. So then uh, you just put in this and uh, slide it under the hole. You, you can see it probably. Try to align the camera and the lights. And now you see uh, the nut there. But uh, unfortunately everything is magnetic so it's not the most uh, simple. Now, and then you just drop this. Now it's there. Obviously it can, can be helped. Now it's there. You see the uh, bolt there and then we have the nut here. If the light is better, yeah. And then you just repeat it for these other holes. So now everything is done. So I'm just using this other uh, coupler so I can distinguish between these two uh, easily. So this is the eight millimeter side. So that goes here. And then just the motor goes on the other side. So I will try to uh, arrange it nicely. So the mechanism is done. So now, yeah, we should need to remove these supports. And then I can uh, either use, again, insert nuts and then just uh, screw them on top. Or I just use large enough diameter uh, bolts. So I can direct the bolt into the plastic. Bolt uh, option works fine. And then... Uh, this hole is used to mount this screw so it can hold uh, the plate so you can see that here we have the plastic and that's this guy so that's the inner in, inner piece or uh, middle piece and then on top of that middle piece since we have this hole we can mount this mounting plate so now i have two focus stacking rigs and uh, obviously all of these have their own corresponding uh, PCBs. So this is what I wanted to show you in this video. I wanted to show you all the tips and tricks regarding how to assemble uh, these parts uh, based on my design and uh, on my files and everything. So once again you have all these 3D printed parts, you print them or you ask PCBWay to print them. And then uh, make sure that you ream these holes using a drill bit, 8mm. And then you put in uh, the guides and you put in the nuts uh, in the crosshead. Then you put on the back plate and then you put everything together. Make sure that everything is nicely aligned. And then you have a focus stacking rig. So then you can uh, make very good uh, macro uh, pictures and then you can use focus stacking to have uh, enhanced or extended uh, depth of field on your uh, macro uh, photos. So once again, don't forget to visit the links in the description. Go to PCBWay's website, visit my project's uh, site, both for the PCB and also for this mechanism. They have their own uh, individual project sites. And also I wrote uh, blog articles on my website so you can see everything step by step with photos and everything, how to assemble the things, what are the shortcomings, uh, how to deal with different things. So you can find those. 
uh, visit pcbv.com if you need any kind of uh, 3D printing services or PCB manufacturing. So I hope that you learned something. I hope this video was useful to you and see you in the next video.